Hello everyone, my name is Omar and I'm the co-founder of EasyPanel, which is an automated flow cytometry panel design platform that is available online on our website here, flow-cytometry.net. Uh, the most important and the main tab here is EasyPanel. And I'm gonna explain today how to design a spectral flow cytometry panel on the Aurora 5 laser in the space of a few seconds. Um, so people would have to go to this tab, would have to either create an account or uh, log in um, if they already have one. So I'm using the Baylor College of Medicine uh, at Texas account here, and I'm gonna select, so it shows me the different cytometers available at this university. And I'm interested right now in the Cytec Aurora 5 laser. Uh, after choosing this, it shows me the configuration of the cytometer. Uh, including the different lasers and channels or filters. Uh, and then I can go next to the next uh, stage where I should enter the panel details, namely the few antigens I'm interested uh, for my panel. So we can either enter them one by one, just like I'm doing here and I've, as I've showed in the previous video. Alternatively, I can uh, choose to import them directly and automatically using an Excel or CSV. Uh, template that just looks like this. Um, one comment here uh, that is important when if you are using the Excel uh, or CSV template in antigens, please do not add uh, the name like different antigens, uh, different aliases of the same antigen. For example, for PD1, you can put PD1 as entered like this or PD1 like that or CD279, but please avoid entering PD1 parentheses PD1 slash CD279 because in this case the algorithm would not recognize the antigen. So I will just here enter PD1 for example. Anyways, I already have a panel uh, that I can upload. It's an Excel uh, that uh, I have just uploaded right now. So as you've seen, uh, it's a T cell panel. I think it is about 20 or 25 antigens, 23. Uh, these are the names of the antigens. Um, we have to choose the species reactivity. So I'm going to go with uh, human. Um, and then these are a few different options and functionalities that I've explained in my previous video uh, and that impact the panel design. Anyways, there is a small question mark that explains what these options are and how exactly they impact the panel design. I'm going to click next. It's asking us here about the viability die. Uh, it's actually the same principle as before. If you have one specified, like for the fluorochromes, you can always enter the fluorochrome in case you already have CD4, um, uh, Alexa Fluor 561, for example. If you do not have one, you can just leave it unspecified. In other words, you do not have to be designing panels from scratch. In case you have a few fluorochromes that you would like to fix as part of your panel, you can enter them. So same thing for the viability die. Uh, you can specify within a pretty large database of viability dyes, or you can just leave it unspecified and let the platform design it for you. There is another uh, nice feature here, uh, which is excluding fluorochromes. So in case, uh, for example, you do not like Alexa Fluor 405, or you do not like Fitzy, for example, you can always enter a list of antigens here and exclude them from your panel. Uh, I would suggest first to not exclude anything and to have a look at the panel suggested. Uh, we end up within the space of a few seconds or maximum a minute and a half uh, getting this optimized flow cytometry panel suggestion, including the different antigens we listed and then automatically suggested fluorochromes that are optimized for each antigen. The last column features uh, products, commercial products. Uh, so for example here, Fox B3, you can check this and it will show you the different commercial products grouped by vendor, uh, as well as the name of the clones. Uh, and so you can click on whichever link you're interested in and you would get redirected to the vendor's uh, page. Uh, here, a few uh, important information, including the complexity index corresponding to the panel that was suggested. And as you may notice, this is actually a pretty low uh, complexity index. This is as low as it can get uh, for a panel of this size, uh, hence the panel optimization. But this is not the only criteria for our panel optimization. We also tried to match antigens uh, to fluorochromes in such a way that 
takes into account antigen's expression level, antigen's co-expression profile, and match them judiciously with the best possible fluorograms. We also uh, compute what we call the total similarity score. And by the way, it is also explained here. It is essentially just the sum of the uh, similarity scores of the different fluorograms that you can see here. You can export the panel as a CSV or an Excel to your local computer. Uh, you can also visualize the spectrum viewer corresponding to the spectral signatures of the different fluorochromes. Uh, zoom in, move to the right, move to the left. Uh, you can save the panel to your own account, um, as I'm doing, doing here. Um, and uh, there are a few other features that I can explain in later videos. Maybe one most important is customize the panel by manual panel builder. So you can check, check this button. Uh, and in case you are not satisfied with any of your, the suggestions, you are welcome to make fine edits or fine tunings of the panel by uh, removing a few selections and adding them. So what this would uh, redirect you to is a page where you have access to the full commercial database uh, of all the products that exist. And then, you know, for example, uh, if for any reason you do not like the suggestion of CD56BUV805, you can always remove it and you will see the full commercial database of CD55, CD56 human. And so you can make whichever selection you're interested in and then move to the summary page. If you, anyone has any questions, please let us know by hitting the chat button here. Thank you very much.